All right, ladies and gentlemen, the date is Monday, April 22nd. The time is 6.02 p.m. I will now call this budget work session for fiscal year 24-25 to order. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, at this time, I will turn it over to our mayor, Mayor Hushauer, for a brief introduction of what to expect uh, for this session. All right, thank you, Council President, and thank you, Council, for attending this evening. I would like to begin this meeting by reading an excerpt from several of the town's past annual financial audits. Future revenues will be among the most important topics of discussion for elected officials in the coming years. Without an increase in revenue, the town will no longer be able to provide the same level of service to its citizens. Planning for the future financial health of the town will be the focus of the mayor and town council. Increasing real estate tax revenue can be accomplished via two means by increasing the tax rate on existing revenue sources or increasing the tax base from which the revenue is collected. That's development of properties. Either method will be beneficial to the fiscal health of the town. That's the excerpt. We have been very lucky in utilizing ARPA money to keep our tax rate stable while rebuilding infrastructure in the town. Thus, I am happy that we have kept tax rates stable for the first two years, two fiscal years, of my and three of our council members' terms. Our operating costs have stayed within our means, and at our current rate, we would be able to balance our operating budget once again. And the staff has done an excellent job of funding capital projects through grants, though the extraneous costs, associated costs have slowly depleted our town's reserves to a concerning level. It is no secret that the town council members and I have been discussing the need to build a police station for our police department. Every year, the town spends $75,000 to rent a portion of a building that serves as our current station. This current location, while adequate in some regards, does not meet the codes as established by our policies in regard to building construction. The combination of annual expenses and inadequacy of the current space mandates a long-term solution. That solution is to build a police station. This will be an expensive endeavor requiring a bond to pay the full expense of design and construction. In the fall, should this budget pass by the council with this strategy, the staff will seek a bond, allowing for a property acquisition and design in fiscal year 25. The station will be fully built realistically within about two to three years, barring any unknown variables. To repay the bond, the budget proposes a three cent tax raise, taking our taxes from 0.1662 to 0.1992 per $100 of assessed real estate value. This will supply enough re revenue to make payments to the bond over a 20 year period. I take some comfort in that even at this rate, Mount Airy will still remain the lowest tax municipality in Carroll County. The budget is divided into four main sections, general operating, general capital, water and sewer operating, and water and sewer capital. Capital. The process for this evening, if the council president is willing, would be to have Katie Moore, our senior accounting clerk, go through the general operating budget. When she reaches the police budget, I'd request that we go from the general operating budget to the police portion of the capital budget in order for our chief to provide answers and input to all of our MAPD questions, then excuse him and return to the general operating budget for all the other categories. Then general capital followed by water and sewer. The goal is to get through the budget this evening. The budget must pass by a supermajority of 4-1 at the following council meeting. I would recommend that if a conversation on a particular item goes too long that the president query the members to see if continued discussion is warranted. The staff is here to answer particular budget questions as needed. Feel free to engage them as needed. 
Again, thank you for your consideration of the FY25 budget and council president and Katie, uh, the floor is yours at this point. And I, just to be clear, I am good with letting the MAPD go so that our chief can, can be on his way. Okay. <coughs> So we will start with page one of the general fund operating budget. So these are the revenues. Um, I do have a change for the um, county shared taxes. We just got our Frederick County estimate on 415. Um, so this number can actually increase to uh, 904,489. So would you bless us know with that change? At least the line item, or what line is that? The uh, four zero six. Okay, gotcha. Yep. Hmm. So that increases by how much? So um, it'll increase by forty five thousand three hundred fifty seven to nine hundred four forty nine. Yeah, I'm I'm okay with that too. Sure. It's money in, so we'll take it. Yeah. <laughs> expenditures depending on if we still have a positive it'll increase the transfer over to the capital. Okay, that's what based on like how many plots for the community garden, how many plots we have, what they're charged for, and kind of what that number is. Thank you. Uh, Line uh, 4072 developer inspection fee that went up to 15,000. What's, is that the, uh, the new impact fees? What is that? So again, I base that on what we have taken in the past. So the developer inspector fee is actually something that we get with a public works agreement. Um, it's an 8% fee that we take for our, that is part of their agreement in order to do all of the inspections that is required. Okay. So I just increased that based on the last couple of years and what we've taken in based on public works, works agreements. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so now we are on page three, which is um, general government expenses. Anybody pop up the town council salary by chance? No? Okay. Now, unfortunately, that wouldn't be in effect for you guys. It would be for the next elected people. <laughs> Any questions at all? Yes, yes a quick question. Uh, looks like that's that's dropped to, to thirty one thousand, and that looks like the lowest it's been for quite a while. What was the rationale for dropping that? Um, that was based on what we spent so far this year. You're talking about legal fees? Yes. Yeah, it's based on what we spent so far this year. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah, our legal fees have gone down. It's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? All right. So, page four is office and building expenses. Sorry, I got a 
any questions? I'm sorry, I had to take a call from my daughter, oh. daughter there. So sorry. Um, just a question on the previous page, 5309, the dues, meetings, and mileage. Mm -hmm. Uh, you got 4,000 on the MML. I know at the previous meetings there have been discussions of potential rate increases or for fee increases. So the MML monthly meetings, those are your, um, yeah, I know, the, 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 like the different county meetings. Yeah. Um, and then there's 2,000 in there that's specifically for the joint county MML meeting okay. that the town hosts. Um, well, I'm just asking, there's 4,000, but I'm saying that there's been talks of at the meetings to increase the fees the towns pay into it, have well, we? I mean, we didn't adjust it for that. Okay. Um, we kind of leave it at 4,000 because it's all based on how many meetings you guys actually attend. Gotcha. Um, and as you can see from our 23 and 22 actuals, I mean, in 22 we spent 1795 and 23 we spent 2040. Okay. So, so, I think, so if there is an increase, I think it'll be okay. Okay, cool, thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions at all? We we can ask that questions since you, Katie. Can you show them where the um, where the income is from the rental for the pharmacy at the train station? Yes, that is in line item zero one zero 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 four five four seven on page two. It says one rent one North Main Street, so um, it's sixteen thousand eight hundred. Another quick question. Notice under the line on 5301, mm -hmm. I guess it's just based on what we've done in the past and things of that nature, that the expenses for some of the items, like the town hall, the, the utilities and other things, have gone down. Mm -hmm. and it's just based it's just, on. It's based on what we've spent so far this year. Okay. Um, if, if any of the numbers have gone down, it's, it's either based on the actuals of the other years plus what we spent so far this year. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Anything, bro? Now, this is office and building expenses continued. Any questions about the We're going too fast. No, no, I'm good. No. Feel free just to speak up. But if we have nothing else, we can move on to six. Oh, Again, this is another continuation of office and building expenses. Should be council page three. Yeah. Um, and then we'll go we'll refer back to page two for the council. That's what we're looking at up on the screen. Okay, I have a question. Yes, sir. On page one, <clears throat> first item, 5108 salaries, wages, police. This. Um, Real quick, see so one second, I'm sorry. Yeah. We're just right now, we're on. So he, he's on the breakdown of this, which is fine. I can stay here if you guys want to just ask me questions based okay. on the line items, and then okay. I can I go see. to that I page. You. I got you. So salaries are not on this because? No. I was going to say salaries aren't in this because that's what we discussed after the meeting. 
the closed session. Okay. This, well, does this does this include the addition of a addition? Oh, the 12th officer, yes. Okay, so all right, thank you. Do we have any questions regarding the penalty? It's pretty kind. No. Okay. So then, council will flip back to page two for meetings next week. Okay. These are just insurance. Any questions at all about insurance? Hold on. Gotcha. And then all of them line up with mine from here on out. <laughs> I, accidentally, I accidentally moved it by mistake. I mean, it looks like oh, I mean, the, you know, the insurance payments are going to be what it's going to be. There's not much. Mm -hmm. I see someone up and someone down. Right. Uh, any questions at all? Then we will now go to council page four. And it should be on the same page as on that one. There should be electric and utilities. Any questions? All right. I will point out something because it, it, it's probably going to look questionable. So, uh, the tenant's proportionate share of landlord's operating expenses. It is significantly less for fiscal year, fiscal year 25 than it is for 24 because we renewed the lease in um, 24 and so it restarted our base amount so that's why it's back down to 13,500 so because we were in like a month to month um, before we renewed the lease um, we would get like quarterly payments that were a little bit more than what our monthly share would cover and so that's why that number was going up okay so we're locked in right now with the new lease mm -hmm. Any questions at all? All right. Anyone have any questions about network computer service? Okay. Training, meeting, and membership dues. So there is, um, like you see under new hire testing, we did a account for two um because we're one is the 12th officer and then the other one is um if someone is promoted within and you have to hire a new officer to cover that position Wait. saying that katie i'm not i guess the adopted budget fiscal year 2024 is just it's 2800 is that just based on us doing like one officer or any so, not using it for the full year or anything. So we actually had two new hires um, in this year, and mm -hmm. so we were able to get a better idea. Where in the past we were kind of guessing. Gotcha. Okay. Um, where now we actually know how much new hires because we have two. That should be close to an actual not a. Right. Yeah. I do like at least in this one that the cost per unit or the cost per one officer or one I think is all the way in the left. Mm -hmm. So you can gauge. Mm -hmm. Thank you for doing doing that. Either Katie or the chief for doing that. However you said it, whoever designed them, Katie did. Thank you, Katie. <laughs> All right. Any questions on the training meeting or membership dues? Right, we'll move on to uniforms, gear, and equipment. Any questions at all? We, we do have, um, we do have extras just in case during the year in case something gets destroyed or something extras as far as what to do. various equipments and stuff so, like if there's I, I, you want to say like say if a piece of equipment gets broken or so we age do, out or something of that nature right so for holsters and things like that uh, we do we do have one uh, extra taser and it's helpful so we do have some spare radios mm -hmm. also. So we do have an abundance of different supplies there for the officers so they maintain the equipment. Mm -hmm. right. well, yeah, that saves me questions answering later. I just thought I would say that in general to cover everything, just to make sure that we did have some spares if something went, went wrong. Cool, thank you, Chief. Yes. Any questions? I do have one question. Mm -hmm. 
and probably it's unchief. How often do we shop your sidearm carry as far as whether it's SW, Glock, whoever it may be, to check pricing, etc.? So for the Glocks in itself, I mean, mostly uh, all Maryland law enforcement officers most carry that Glock in itself, and that being that, in fact, that uh, there was some other, um, we could say, uh, active shooter or assailant. All of these magazines are interchangeable for all the firearms in itself. So currently, we don't shop for anything else okay. uh, for that. Uh, if we did, we would go on to the state side and find out what facilities have other firearms that we're looking for. But we would not currently change any plan for the block that we okay. currently have. And you feel comfortable with all the equipment you currently have? Yes, sir. Okay. Good question. Okay. Office supplies. Alright. Any questions at all? Phones, internet, and cable. Expenses. Mm -hmm. All right. Fuel for vehicles and equipment, uh, gas and oil, and also motor vehicle repair. I did have a question earlier, but the town administrator answered that. It was related to potential cost savings given somewhere else, but she clar clarified that the way they do it currently is the best way. Okay. All right, any other questions? No. Code enforcement. Anything at all? Move on to canine expenses. I will say it does seem like this is a good investment for the cost of what we're getting. You know, it's it's definitely money well spent for the canine. Uh, community outreach and education. Uh, question. Yes, sir. So in previous years, we had the Main Street Safety Task Force, and now that's been blended into the Streets and Roads Commission. And over the previous two budget cycles. We had money specifically budgeted for some radar speed signs, which are now up and implemented, and I think getting getting good payback on those. And then we had educational materials. We had some uh, yard signs for the um, slow down for your hometown campaign, and I think we're good there. Um, and then we also have a brochure that's handed out by the officers to people who get warnings and they're speeding. I think we're in pretty good shape with that, but I think just as, as for last year, I just want to make sure in this budget, I guess especially under um, somewhere in here, there's, there's, we might need about 300, $300. <laughs> Jeez. Um, <laughs> oh, I make sure you're on your toes. Um, there's a special gift certificate in the back of each. Brochure. Now, three hundred dollars for printing additional brochures if we might need them. So, is is there some allowance within the community outreach budget where uh, we need brochures printed and things like that? In the past, we concluded that in there, I just want to make sure that's accounted for. Yeah, it's in that State Streets Awareness, the 1500. Okay, very good. Thank you. All right, any other questions? All right. The bike patrol program. It's pretty Shouldn't be any questions there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, capital purchases, vehicles, and upfitting. So 
the not for the new for the twelve dollars. Okay. Just a quick question. Not going to try and ignite a debate between Chevy and Fords here or anything of that nature. But is is this for the Ford? Have we priced out the price differences between, say, the Chevy Tahoe and the Ford Explorer? I have the state listing for all of the vehicles that um, could be fitted for that. Okay. So, so we're looking at other options and exploring that also. Okay. Versus so, newer models versus, um, I guess you could say that they're like a prototype in itself is a demo. Uh, demos are being used once they're not used anymore. Um, they have all, they already come with everything other than mm -hmm. there would be our computer that would be uh, set mm -hmm. for it. So this is kind of like, not, I don't want to say worst case scenario, but it, I mean, there's potential for savings there depending on what you, I, the I final think, is. Yes, I think in itself is using numbers that are currently there. Okay. Because we use what we had for upfitting that we took. So, I mean, the prices on some of it has rose okay, yeah. for there, but I wanted to go um, just a little above in itself. Okay. And the vehicle would be purchased probably under the state fleet I want to say this, the, yes, whatever that purchase agreement's yes, called, right, the state fleet agreement. Right, that's why I have all of the numbers for the okay. program, yes. Right. Cool, thank you. Yes, thank sir. you, Chief. Yes, sir. Can I just, so this is on the capital side, correct? Yes, so we have, yeah. moved, we okay. have moved on to uh, police so, capital. Yeah, so if you're following along on the big sheet, then we, we jumped ahead several pages to cover the vehicle because that's a capital expense. Okay. But keep it simple here. Well, that's why I jumped ahead so we see some easier to follow when we're talking about the police. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> All right, so now we're under capital purchases and equipment. Yeah. Any questions at all? So just to explain why they're all zeros. Yeah. Um, some of the, the items, um, because we increased our threshold of what is capital, the threshold is now 5,000. Um, some things are no longer considered capital, so they're on the operating side. And then, you know, we budget for these things um, in case it's needed every year and we haven't really needed it. Um, so I encouraged to not budget for anything and then I mean, if we need something, we're going to do a budget amendment and they're going to get it. So um, I didn't think that we needed to budget yeah. for just in case. Okay. Hence my question about the if we had enough reserve equipment and stuff. So, well, and again, it's like you need something. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, no problem. Yeah. amendment for sure. Make sure he has what he needs. Yeah. All right. Any questions on that? All right, we're on to capital projects uh, with the police building. Any questions at all? I do have a question. So we've got um, the 500,000. Make sure we get my numbers here. <laughs> it's kind of a carryover from last year, a reallocation, so to speak. And we've got 500,000 for digital monies. You've got these specifically into land acquisition versus engineering and design. If we chose to use it all for land acquisition, could we? I mean, we, we can make we can blend this any way we want. Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. So if say we got really lucky and something only cost a hundred thousand, um, then we could use nine hundred thousand for uh, engineering and design. Okay. So. We break it down into subcategories and how we plan on spending it, but it's in one line. Okay, and, and again, this, so we want to use all that for land acquisition. Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, any final questions? All right. Just to confirm, we're done with the police side of it, correct? Did Lynn have any oh. questions or anything? Sorry. And just in case you were wondering, Paisley has everything she needs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Like, <laughs> Paisley have a vest? Uh, I believe, yes. Yes. Sorry. Yes. 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 Yes.
and I have a follow-up question. So, so again, <clears throat> we, we do have budgeted in, in here now for one additional officer, because this is something that the community has been asking for for many years. I know when the police, when we stood up a police department, um, people wanted 24-7 covers, and, and that was the expectation. And this, this will now allow us to have 24-7 coverage every day, all year. If you're referring to establishing that 12th officer, yes, sir. Yes. You go 24-7, it's just the working of the schedule in itself. Okay, and then a quick follow-up question. With, with 12 officers, assuming we were fully staffed with 12 officers, um, does this allow us to move to some sort of a rotation where there's more than two officers out on patrol at any one time? Would it allow us to put three officers out at some proportion of time over the year above and beyond what we currently do? Yes, currently with the 10 hour shift that we have right now, Officer Everts isn't in the rotation in itself. So Officer Everts having the canine unit as a specialty is he's rotated in as a factor for uh, in case an officer is sick training uh, I, i'm able to place uh, canine uh, officer efforts in that position and not only that allowing it to be overlaps both shifts from the day shift to the night shift and still allowing uh, the canine officer to have off on his days and then having the required training to keep um, paisley certified also okay so what i'm hearing is well, i think what what the public will appreciate hearing is with this addition we will have true 24 7 coverage and it may provide even more officer coverage on the street on a daily basis yes sir thank you yes all right any other questions for the chief before we let go thank you very much for coming all right, thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. So, Lynn, I'll give you a quick overview. We've only made one change, and it was to add more to the revenues. So, we got Frederick County doesn't put out their budget until April 15th, so we can't get our county shared taxes number from them until they do. Um, so, we got their number in, and it was higher than I had initially put in. So, right now, we haven't made any other changes, so we have a surplus of 45000 So, that's the only change that's been made so far. And that's the share of revenue? Yes, in county share taxes, 4066. Um, now we're on, we're, we're back on general fund operating and we're on PHB. Sanitation department. Mm -hmm. All right, sanitation department and expenses. No, that's later. <laughs> I'll be concise if you want to say it. Yeah. Um, you should be on page eight on the big, the big document. I'll let everybody kind of catch up, take a quick glance, and then uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, just back on page seven, we did glance over another public safety item just to make sure people were, was the cost share to the um, the contribution to the fire department. Oh, I, I thought. You know, no, we got side sidetracked on the. So the contribution to the fire company is 10% of our previous, what 10% of our previous tax rate would be. So the 1662, not the 1162. So they're not, they, they are not getting 10% of the increased tax rate. It's oh, okay. the original tax rate. Does that make sense? Yeah, not, okay. yeah, you haven't adjusted that potentially for the, right. for the so surplus the, and the, the revenue. The for 10% yeah. based on the tax rate at one, uh, point one six. Gotcha. All right. Cool. Thank you. Cool. All right. Uh, no, since, since it's Carl's fault. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, yeah. All right. Now we're going to go back to page seven. <laughs> <laughs> say that. That's why I don't want to say it. <laughs> I, I, I want to say this in, in, in broad strokes. Are we back on page seven? Yes. Oh, right. Okay. And, uh, yeah. The fire department's um, contribution. Um, have we thought about capping this number in any way? I mean, this seems to increase as our revenue increases at a certain percentage. What, what about capping this to 
uh, a set value or breaking it into subcomponents for different purposes? So that is completely up to you guys. Um, the 10% of the real estate taxes has just been something that previous mayors have, like one mayor started it and the mayors after that just kind of continued. There's nothing written that says that's how much we have to, like there's no MOU, that, that was just a, a good faith one mayor said, hey, we're going to give 10% of our revenue to the fire company and then every mayor after that has just kind of kept up with it. Um, if, if you want to decrease it, you will increase it. That is 100% up to you guys. Okay, I think maybe, maybe I will answer my own question. So if we keep the number the way it is during the course of the budget year, we want to change that. We can modify that or are we locked into this? So number? once you approve it, that's the number. So like throughout the year, we, we wouldn't change it. So once it's approved um, at the May, once the budget mm -hmm. is approved at the May council meeting, that's their contribution to this plan. Okay. Yeah, if I can jump in for a second. I mean, there are some discussions that are going on with the fire company and your original question was, is there any thought of capping it? Yes, there is a thought of capping it. However, uh, we're in discussions with the fire company that I, I don't think are, are open discussions. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. Thanks. And is this paid over the course of the year or is this just one check sent? It's one lump sum that we sent at the beginning of November. Okay. Can we now go to page eight? Yes. No. <laughs> uh, yes, we can since the chief left already, so we can't question him anymore. Right, so we should be on uh, sanitation expenses, streets and roads uh, expenses. I have, I have some questions and requested additions. Um, it's it's just a quick question on on the uh, fifty seven oh three the other operating expenses. Um, this is for recycle. It looks like we're spending 13000 for new recycling totes. So is that is that for Carroll County side? Or? Yes, because Frederick County supplies yeah. the recycling bins to the Frederick County residents. And is this something that's direly needed this fiscal year or? So we usually order, so there's a minimum the amount that we have to order. Um, so in order for them to ship them to us um, and they have in, the company that we use have increased their minimum amount So it used to be 112 or 113 now it's 180 um, And we usually order new recycling totes every two to three years and this would just be the year This we haven't ordered them in three years. So this would usually just be our year Okay um, And we we do that because the our original recycling totes when we initially started giving Carroll County residents the recycling totes. They're, I want to say pretty old, like 10 plus years old, and just from being banked around and yeah. weather, they get busted and broken. And Katie, they're almost 20 years old. Oh, I'm sorry, they're almost 20 years old. <laughs> okay. Can I ask a follow-up on that specifically before you move on to something that more? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So if a resident, there's breaks, it's old, whatever, do we not charge them for the a replacement tote? So if it, it just never, because a lot of times what happens is it's not the residents, it's the trash haulers when they slam them back down, they bust right. the wheels off of their Because I've had people tell me that like they bought a house and there was no tote and the town was going to charge them for it. Yes. That it wasn't there. In yes. that instance, yes, there is a hundred dollar charge for it. Hundred dollars. So we do recoup some of the money on this thirteen thousand. A little bit. Okay. So I'm fair enough. Yeah, so if someone moves into a new house and that recycling bin isn't there, um, because the previous tenant took it, unfortunately, that tenant would be responsible to purchase a new one. Um, now, if they're bust because the haulers slammed it down and they cracked it the side, we're not going to charge them for that because that was out of there. Right. Okay. Thanks. Would a real quick would a resident have to call town hall or request one because theirs is damaged in order to get one? Yes. Okay. Only Carroll County, Frederick County takes care of Frederick County residents. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now I want to ask the council for your consideration. I'm here. <clears throat> I'm a member in the liaison of the Streets and Roads Commission. The Streets and Roads Commission, and I double checked this with the chairperson today. Um, the commission had uh, has been wanting to do some work on the crosswalks out here on Main Street. So there are three crosswalks. There are thermoplastic crosswalks. The town has an MOU with MDOT 
and I believe that was in 2015, and I believe these crosswalks were installed around 2015. So it's been almost 10 years. Um, and so the estimate for the cost of removing those, replacing them with new thermoplastic, so they'll be nice and fresh and new. The estimate from town staff was with inflation and such, it would be around 10K per crosswalk. So that would be three crosswalks, that would be 30K. So that is one option to consider 30K. If that was problematical, I think budgeting at least 10K to do one crosswalk, which would be the one down by the train station Ben Gu area, because that's the area that's most in question right now about being a safe crosswalk because of the liquidity ale works, traffic and such. Um, if 30,000 was a bridge too far, perhaps 10 to 15,000 would be an allowance to do one crosswalk in this fiscal year. So that, that is the ask from Streets and Roads. Mark, are you? Okay, I just wasn't sure, I didn't want to inter interrupt you. Two questions here regarding, I'm not, I'm just trying to figure out, first off, where would the, say if we scaled it back to 10K or whatever, where would that money come from? Where would you? We, we have to. Okay. Money. Okay. You just don't have. Okay. I, that's what I wanted to clarify. I can, I, can, I can find you the money as oh, we go through this. Not yet. <laughs> it gets into wants versus needs. Yeah. You know, I'm proposing. Oh that. yeah. No. I'm. I get that. Just wasn't making. I wanted to make sure if you had like a just general idea. It sounds like you may already. Bonnie, but with the MOU with the state, are we responsible for upkeep of the crosswalks and yeah. things? Okay. Yeah, they installed them um, with the agreement that we would maintain and clean that area. Okay. But you said three crosswalks, Councilman? Where is, oh, is that, I guess that one, the one down there and Right, if, he did, okay. if we did them all, it would be 30K, I think was a good estimate. Well, you know, uh, no, yeah. It was an estimate. Yeah, estimate. We didn't get prices, yeah. it was yeah. estimate. No, I was just having trouble visualizing the, the three call faults. And then as soon as I started talking about it, I was like, okay, I clicked where the three that you were referencing along Main, Main Street. But if you had, if you were asking me, well, Councilman DeMotor, what would you prioritize? I'd prioritize the one down by the yeah. um, train so What would we, say if we did it, what would we be replacing it? Because right now, as you said, the thermoplast has got the brick, the fake brick, if I remember. What would that be replaced? with would it just be the standard uh, white line crossing or I'll, let, or I'll give it i did a little research i think the thermoplastic and then there's another epoxy kind of a treatment they're both generally the same price and they both generally last the same amount of time they're both the ones that last the longest so it would be the same technology and it, i'll defer to the town staff at the time, we created a standard for the downtown. Yeah. Uh, if you want to change that standard, you can go to just the state highway standard or something different. Yeah. Um, but, um, now, I'm just trying to picture the state highway standard would just be the white lines and stuff. So the brick is our, say, our standard per se. For the downtown. For the downtown. So, I mean, okay, but it served the same purpose as a false walk notify. Okay. So it's just a matter of if we did do it and replace it. In, in kind or something that might not fit the downtown look or standard. I'd be okay with with doing the one down there with adding the 10,000 doing the one down there let's see how it turns out and if it because uh, I don't think they're in horrible shape right now uh, but you know so we could we could buy another year on the other two and put in the budget for next year if, if we do this one and it works out good and we go home. And the other thing this, this allows us to do is to continue to have conversations and it may not fly, but there has been talk within the commission about because of liquidity, wanting to perhaps move, uh, some wanted to add an additional crosswalk. Another option is to take the crosswalk 
that's currently by the train station and move that down closer to Aleworks. So those are all different options. And this money would allow you to either redo the crosswalk in place, or if it was decided you could move it with, it, with MCOT approval, you could remove the one and, and move it down a couple. So you have a couple of things that you can, you can look into. But in a minimum, the base case would be to renew the one by the train station. Uh, I'd say four out of five of you are agreeable to that, but intend on voting for the budget, then that would be good. Yeah, you know, I would think instead of doing all three at once, let's let's do the most important one, see how it walks, see how the process goes. Do we have any concerns with the MDOT having an issue with replacing the crosswalk at all? Is that anything we need to go through them for? Yeah, if we're changing that, you know, if we don't use their standard, if it's just the solid bars running uh, in the direction of the travel, yeah. um, like they did a bunch of them along Green Street. Right. Um, you know, if we want to do something different than those two, then we would have to set a different mission. Yeah, I think we certainly coordinate, but since they, the MOU was set up to use the thermoplastic, I would think they would really approve that. So just if they did it the first time, there should be no issue at all with them approving it again. Right. Okay. It, it wasn't experimental. It wasn't one of their standards, so they did it as an experiment. Okay. Um, and so the probability of it getting approved by anybody is pretty low. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the agreement says we can. Okay. Okay. As long as it's the same in kind replacement I'm good with like the break yeah. to go with the town I don't want something totally different where it might not fit with the other ones but I'm good with it yeah now again that's that's, to 10 grand. I'm sorry. that's an estimate yeah but I, so we we don't know but that's that's an estimate I mean do you feel it's a safe estimate uh again ish last time it was <laughs> you know when you do three of them it's going to be less expensive because yeah. you're getting the crew out there one time uh, for three of them now if you're doing one might be more. Yeah. Last time it was about, I think, 5K. I think the material was 5K and then the state Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll query the council real quick. I, I'm comfortable with it up to 10,000. I think if we need to, if it ends up being more, maybe we'll revisit it at a meeting uh, to have it approved. Um, I would say that I'm, I'm good with it. If it comes to my revenue. I'm good with it. I'm good with it. Cause yeah. Okay, on behalf of Streets and Roads, thank you. We're going to up that 25 to 35. Okay, so oh, are we going to yeah, that's right. so we can move down the roads? What was that? Yes. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure we're all good. With, like, nobody had anything else. All right, it's my first time. I, mean, okay. well, I just want to make sure we agreed to it. Now we got to find the mo where the money's so coming from. Uh, find some. So, does the mayor, not to say, but since say, not saying, oh, it's easy to spend, but instead of trying to adjust the line item, should we just reduce that extra revenue from Frederick County by 10,000? Where it ends up is, uh, uh, Katie, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but uh, we just added oh, 40,000 up front. Yeah. So, right, so right now it'll come up with that. Yeah, okay. So at the Got end you. of the day, you know, there's the amount of money that gets transferred over to <coughs> the capital okay. side. So it ends up reflecting there. Okay. So it, it would be 10,000 less going over to the capital side, but we're already 40,000 more, so. so. We don't have to, currently, we don't we have, have to find have anything to, right now. We don't have to do any fancy filter. Okay, cool, I just wanted to make sure. All right, so we're good with san the sanitation expenses? Uh, one other, oh, I'm sorry. Well, I just had a question about the streets and roads. What oh. is the dues that we pay annually? That's on the capital side. Oh, you put that on the capital side? Yeah, for the stormwater management. Oh, okay. And that's on the capital side. Okay. Uh, sanitation expenses. Are we are we all good with that? I just want to bring one thing up, just make a comment on it. I know we've got 17 scheduled yard waste pickups. Um uh, like the commission was talking about maybe potentially requesting or adding one in March, uh just for maybe if uh because people start doing things in March and collect debris over March. But I think talking with Katie and stuff, I would like to say or at least make it announce it or not make it out there that if we don't use an emergency pickup money for that we could potentially use that in march once we get a better thing a better feel for it if we use it or not in march or at, they were thinking 
just try it maybe and see what happens and go from there. But I said I would mention it, so. All right. Um, I'm good with everything else there, sir. Uh, just a question about the, the biannual striping contract, the 30000 well, we're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna finish the sanitation department. Oh, gotcha. Over. No, I'm good with the sanitation. All right, other than that. All right, now we can bump down the streets and roads, and council member can order. So, so Barney, what does that, is that like every every line and arrow in the town of Mount Airy, or is it certain certain sections that need to be done? What, what does that cover? So it's all of the white and yellow lines, and select the arrows that need to be so it's pretty much you go through the whole town and freshen everything up. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So this is where the ten thousand for the additional crosswalk would go. It would go in the maintenance for roads. So I'm going to increase the twenty five thousand to thirty five thousand. Any other questions at all for the streets and roads or the rest of the page eight? So it's just to clarify, yep. it's the crosswalk um, at the trees where you cross over from Ben Goods over to the tree station, that crosswalk? Correct. Okay. Are you going to put that in the next page? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I'm, I'm not used to the high tech of this. <laughs> That's all about that. There's a, possi paper, there's a possibility of it, of it being relocated if they, if they want to explore that. Okay. That will come to the council table before it's decided on. Um, what are we so we're going to move it? Yeah, I think we would put it on as a discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, more. Yes. Very good. Uh, well, yeah, hey. more. Yeah. Hey, uh, Katie is counseling. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I'm watching you talk. <laughs> yeah. Well, state highway has to be agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. Can you? Councilman Evans mentioned that too. Like, can we put also a note in there and like um, something further council discussion if relocation or cost is above 10K? With council approval and any increase above 10K? I don't know if we need to put on it. That's just on our budget. Make it right now. Maybe let's just do it now. Well, it's just. Good. Sometimes it's just good to have it in there if, you quite, if somebody questions it too. And you've been here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have good. Any more questions on the streets and roads? Okay. Steve, tell the streets and roads commission. Thank you. Yeah. Prospects handled, so we're good. I'm, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> so now we are on to Parks and, Rec. Parks and Recreation, and I do have a change. Okay. Um, so under Parks Enhancements, which is the 516-5305, under amenities, there's 3,000. We can actually zero that out because um, that was for benches, but we don't need it. We don't need them anymore. Brian has benches down at the um, okay. public works department that we can use. So we're taking it down another one. Yep. Okay. So we're going to zero that. Now, before we move on to the amenities, are there anything, other amenities that could fall into that that the parks need? Trash cans, anything else? Not at this time. Okay. Just so we wouldn't have to revisit it later in, in the year. So, okay. Open for more questions on on this page. Yes. Um, Fifty three oh five park enhancements to go down almost signage information centers literature twenty five hundred for new park signs with maps educational information 
what does new park signs mean? Does that mean the, you know, the, the, the really nice formal standardized signs in front of each park, or what is no. this? So the standard signs that you see outside of like Washington's or mm -hmm. Summit Ridge, those range around $10,000 a piece. So this funds here would be for a map of like Windy Ridge. A lot of people are going out to Windy Ridge. They can't tell where, what, how the actual park is laid out. So this is to standardize our parks and have an entryway map printed on 100% aluminum recyclable quick full color that we can have at the park so people know what to anticipate when they're in the park, okay. where to go for amenities, etc. So it's not the entryway sign, this is just a map sign with information. Okay. And some educational too that to show like what's in this habitat so if you walk you can see this. And then I'm, I'm assuming the the, the the Parks and Rec Commission is or are they giving input in terms of prioritizing which which half to do this year? Correct. Thank you. Council President, one question. Since it's Councilman Demoted's fault now for stopping, I can ask the questions here. I'll take full responsibility, <laughs> but not the blame. Okay. Uh, under 5304, the, the section above it, maintenance and repair and parts, um, there was a discussion someone asked me regarding the new uh, mountain bike trail over in Windy Ridge. I'm presuming where once it's all finished and handed over to the town that we will be taking over the maintenance of that trail also. Is any of that, I mean, maintenance itself would cover all the parks, trail maintenance and things of that nature. So have we looked at what it would cost to do the annual maintenance on that yet? Does this number need to be increased any to handle that? And also, have we looked at, uh, I know when I was in the Parks and Rec, there was one, there was a continuing question about the, I want to say the condition of the trail at Watkins, the, the perimeter trail, there were some areas that should be replaced. Have we done that or is that in this too? Do so, you know? Are you talking about the walking trail around Watkins? Yeah, okay. the so, asphalt trail. So that would most likely cost more than $5,000 do it, yeah. Um, so that would be on the capital side, but no, it is not. It's not in the budget, okay. But it doesn't sound like we've looked at any potential maintenance if it's at for, Windy Ridge. for the mountain bike trail at Windy Ridge. Um, no, I don't think it, or, no, it's not okay. included in this, but I'm uh, not sure when that, that yeah, it's, 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 in, so that's not. it's a new amenity. We're not sure of what it would take on annual right. maintenance and things like that, okay. All right, so we will be sooner or later we'll have to do that. And I guess same thing with the skate park too, that would fall under the maintenance mm -hmm. that we would have to budget for at a later date or for annual there is, fixing. We did um budget a thousand dollars under the enhancements for plantings to kind of fix the erosion near the skate park. Yeah. Fix the aesthetics. Oh, I'm talking to you know the actual structure. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. Can I point out something too? I know that the Ellis's and everybody working on that trail is doing all kinds of fundraising still. Yeah. They're all over Facebook fundraising yeah. and we're getting a lot of visitors from out of state, yeah. around the state, out of state, coming mm -hmm. to that park. So I'm imagining it's affecting our businesses, hopefully. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm not. So the is, is they're still, they're not done. Okay. They're still fundraising to help us. Yeah, I, I wasn't knocking the facility no. or the people, I just. No, I know. Yeah. They're, they're still going strong. All right, cool, thank you. So I'll just go ahead and ask the question. Do we, taking care of our ball fields, clearly ball fields are at a premium. Uh, Winfield's going through a ton of things right now. Um, Watkins Park was just completely redone by a Mount Airy independent softball program uh, because it needed it. Are we, looking at any type of process to where we might focus on a specific field once a year, whether we're replacing dirt, backstops, bases, anything, sheds, you know, what, do we have a schedule or a process to make sure that our fields are staying up to, you it's, know, whatever? We, up to, we did up to two years ago, we would go out and groom every field. Yeah. And I thought it was inappropriate. 
It's up to the individual leagues to maintain those fields. The only thing the town is in charge of is mowing the grass and ensuring the fences are safe to be around. Okay. Beyond that, it's on the, we're giving them free baseball fields. Okay. They can at least maintain it. Okay. Yeah, that's, all right, so then, so basically it's our responsibility as, I guess we would see it for safety purposes, right. fencing, trash cans, and just overall grass mowing. Okay. And then those leagues are graded once a month. Okay, perfect. All right, thank you. Sorry, Council President. Now, see, now the blame falls to you for making me think and have a question on regarding the park enhancements. I know that there was discussion in the fall regarding the lighting of the softball field over at Watkins. Is that progressing any? And we don't have to put any money in the budget for that. Wasn't there discussions of a private donor for lights? Yeah, so so is that progressing? That's still progressing there in the permit stage. But yeah, there's going to be no need for funds from the town. Okay. I just cool. Thank you. All right. Any other questions? We'll move on to page ten. And planning and zoning expenses. Take a quick minute to review and let me know if you have any questions. Uh, just a confirmation on something. Um, go down to the last line on the page, the consulting fees at the bottom. This is ten thousand dollars. I'm assuming that can be used for whatever we choose to. It could be used to augment the review of a concept plan for development. Perhaps if we wanted our master plan that we're currently working on to have an outside peer review of that, we could also use use the consulting fees for that as well. Is that, is that accurate? The, the purpose of putting it in there was to hire a consulting company to look at a development plan. Um, in terms of using it to review the master plan, I, I don't think we discussed that. Would that be an issue? Well, no, it wouldn't, but master plan expenses would really come out of the master plan money. Okay. Just to uh, keep it clean. So I think this is more about <laughs> development. So I apologize, I didn't copy over the note, but we kind of kept it in there for the same reason we had it in there last year, which was to review development plans related to MXD and MXD. Mm -hmm. I just need to copy that note over. Okay. So, so I would say no on the master plan. Gotcha. But there's somewhere else, am I missing where the master plan line Directly is? Directly above it, the 18,500. Gotcha. 5418. Yep, I see it. Okay. And most of those expenses are for Franklin. Yeah. What that's going to be. So they have about 15,000 a year. All right. Mm -hmm. We're on page 11 for community development, communications events, and park admin expenses. Take a moment to review. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm just looking at Ashley because I know this is her. This is her value. I know it's coming. Um, <laughs> so downtown revitalization expenses. So just remind me again. We we have the the division or the unit within town government that does community outreach and this kind of activity. Then we have the economic development commission. And those two things kind of overlap. Mm -hmm. So pertaining to things the Economic Development Commission may need support for, where would you say that support is captured? Under the Economic Development Expenses category or this revitalization category? I would look for pages below. It would be under Economic Development Expenses. The downtown revitalization expenses are going to be for downtown. So, Main Street, basically. Um, anything outside of that that's business related, really like um, the admission around Mary Torres, that is always under economic development because that's the whole town. 
Okay. And then I do have a specific question on downtown revitalization expenses. I looked at previous years, FY 2022 up to 2025, and comparing last year's with this year's, this budget is up 52% from last year. And so my question is what, I mean, I look at the second breakout, downtown events and promotions, that's going from 9,500 to 18,700. Why, why are we doubling that? Why, why wasn't what we were doing last year enough for the next year? Because we're increasing programming. So if you look at that last year, we increased in fourth quarter for Mount Scary, which gave us events every single day for a week because that's an added expense. Um, for the upcoming year, we have hol holiday decor that's going to be a large ticket item. We're replacing the wreaths along Main Street. Those run about $500 a wreath between the wreath and the bracket. So that up that line item, um, as well as just regular inflation, cost of events, etc. Um, so, and Fourth of July, we're taking on a bigger leadership role in Fourth of July and the Indian American Spirit Parade this year, which we have not done. We did one year as an off, so this is now a reoccurring content. So we're adding programming, costs mm -hmm. are going up. And we're also adding uh, more description up there. How's, how's the rest of the council feel about this budget area? Just to get on your train of thought here, is it like, were you questioning or wondering about the overall budget total or the just the doubling in the downtown events and promotion? section well, it, it's both or just in general it's, okay you're going up 52 percent and i see where the money's going okay but especially the downtown events and promotion yeah. and that's you're doubling that and then you're buying new wreaths for downtown that's 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 amazing that's yeah. where your money is those two categories yeah okay i just just so i would i'm fine with that because even on the downtown events and promotion if you looked at say 2024 I'll say an odd year or an oddity year. It was only 9,500, but going on the previous two years, it was 19,000 and 17,000 respectively. We are adding more events downtown and related to 4th of July and other things that they can draw people downtown and help the businesses down, downtown during some parts of the year that might be slow and things of that. The wreath. Replacement is probably there been around for a while now. My entire tenure, it's been the same reason. Yeah, that's worth diving a little bit deeper in uh, because Brian's got to put those things together and, and get them hung up and everything. And, and I know for the last couple of years, we've talked about replacing the wreaths and, and then pulled back from it. Uh, but haven't you had to rewire some of those? What are some of the problems you've had with the wreaths? Correct. Yeah. We're band-aiding them together. And how, how many wreaths are out there? We hang probably over 12. Uh, 12? Okay. And, um, so end of, end of life replacement, in other words. They use their useful life, their past a useful life. So I'm, I'm fine with it because, I mean, at least the 10,000 for next fiscal year, not to count that. Excuse me, I was reading the wrong line. I'm sorry, as bad as Councilman DeVos with the 300,000, I nearly gave us all the heart attack. <laughs> it was the 5,000. We'll go back down to something else lower next next year. And I see that Katie has her pen up. <laughs> so I will say, Ashley does really well with getting sponsorships for a lot yeah. of her stuff. So, I mean, she has budgeted 50500 in revenues for her stuff that she plans on getting sponsorships for to help offset these costs. So she's really good at that. that cost <laughs> down in the long run. And something I will say by increasing our programming for downtown, we've looked at Pacer AI, which is cell phone things for foot traffic. And over last year, we're up 150% for foot traffic coming into Main Street. So by doing these programming changes, adding things, we're increasing the culture, the teaching to downtown, 
we're having a more vibrant Main Street. It's hitting a lot of those economic development goals we have. So this is our catalyst point for those. Yeah. So no, those I, who invest in that bucket to bring more people to town yeah. so we have that tourism tie. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's very important to have a sense of community and community spirit and, and people who live in our town, even if they don't go to all the events, I think I think they they like knowing that events are there for the taking if they choose to go to them. And again, a compliment to you because they're always well run, well organized. So I just want to understand, you know, what the additions were for. And then a last quick question back to Economic Development Commission. So if they needed funds for something, they could look. To line 5210 under like advertising, promos, and marketing, or business, and so well, there's no money for business and stuff. But this is where they would, if, they, if something came up during the year and they needed some reasonable funding, this is where they would be able to draw from. Is yeah, that right? that's where they work with our staff liaison and they look at what we have okay. in the budget, what would be appropriate line items or goals for that process. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Right. Now on page 12 for miscellaneous expenses. Any questions at all? A uh, question. Um, a 5909 contingency? What does contingency mean? So this is the mayor's contingency. So if he wants to take, I know in the past he's taken in like a council cognizant commission member to lunch to thank them for if for serving. Um, it would be covered under this line item. Is that like our pizza every night? Yes. Like our pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just a little bit of donuts. money for him. Yeah. <laughs> well, no. Maybe you have 4K, man. Yeah. Well, this is where the little gifts that yeah. the retiring mission uh, leaders come from. Yeah, maybe contingency might not be the best. Yeah, don't say that. Ask for it. <laughs> but yeah, but contingency might not be the best. Petty cash. Petty cash, for better wording for it. If, if someone's um, has. Um, Sorry, I forget the term for it. So, someone passes away and you have to buy flowers, that sort of stuff. Does that come out of here, or is it? We, is that um, we have that under general administrative okay. on both okay. on both funds. Okay. Um, but if you wanted to go above and beyond, like what our our normal would be, mm -hmm. we didn't get to work for now. Yeah, it's, it's a discretionary. We kind of can use it for. Yes, it's a discretionary fund. Yes. Yeah, maybe we'll know. We would call that. Yeah, it's just continuous. I know. Yeah. All right, any further questions on page 12? So, since um, we still have a surplus, this will actually increase the transfer um, to the capital budget. So, if you say something. Okay. Hey, Katie, I just wait to you. I just have more of a general question related to the operating fund or expenses in general. If we say for some unknown reason, once the budget is passed and we, I want to say, go past what's been appropriated for a particular line line item in the budget, how is that extra needed cash handled? Is that handled through like re reallocation of funds from existing already approved line items within the operating budget, budget or a draw, draw down of uh, reserves for some reason? Um, so it would all depend on the amount. Okay. Um, so if you go over one line item 2000 but in that same, so parks, so if parks enhancements for some reason goes over 2000 but parks maintenance is not, then you would try, you try to kind of okay. balance it within the entire department. Okay. So if you know for a fact something came in a little bit higher than you were expecting, yeah. um, then you would try to balance it within that department. And if we've done in the past when this happens, we've kind of, we do have to, Ability or it's not unheard of of transferring it between line different totally line items yep, from like parts to 
streets and roads or something, as <laughs> long know, as it's on the operating yeah, side. If you know for a fact that something's not going to move forward or there is going to be an extra line yeah. item, you can reallocate it via a budget yeah. amendment um, to a, a different yeah. amendment. But if we do that, it would have to be made up. If yeah, we would try not to harm, but if it does, we would have to make certain alter altercations for those existing things. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? The army transfer to capital is two hundred two thousand and one dollar. One dollar. Okay, can someone find a? <laughs> All right, we'll move on to page thirteen. Which is the summary for the general fund operating budget, uh, which breaks down both revenue and expenses. I'll uh, please take a minute to review. And we're going to go through each line item individually anyway, right? Uh, so, oh, this okay. is just the kind of a quick snapshot of the operating. So, total revenue coming in is $7,004,024, and then our expenses equal that same amount. And then, each, just a quick, like each department, this is how much. So. This is just the final total of the breakdown. Yeah. yeah. Just so, um, but yes, we'll go through the capital side now, just like we did. Yeah. Any questions on this breakdown? I know we just went over. So we will now switch to the general fund for the capital. Page one. So just, just a confirmation question. So um, general government, it's XXXX proceeds from bond issuance. Um, again, we are we are making a commitment to get a bond for four point five million dollars in this fiscal year. We are, that's a, that's a solid commitment, correct? That's that's our intention and. Uh, uh, town administrator will be overseeing that, and she the application goes in the fall, correct? Um, it's actually due to August. August, okay. So it will be funded in October or November. Okay. Thank you. Hey Katie, I just want to make a compliment or a comment. Nothing, maybe. I'd just like to say thank you for whoever decided to put in the comment section where some of the um, money comes comes from the various sources of money. Oh, the impact? Yeah. That was the thing. Okay. Thank you. And how much that comes to. Thank you. Yeah, any questions from the two? No follow up. Yeah, quick, quick follow up. And, uh, yeah, that's put in the budget um, so the council can see that that uh, council member Devoter and I worked pretty hard on, on reassessing the uh, uh, the impact fees for the town and raising them up to what we thought was an appropriate level. So, so those are noted where those impact fees show up in the budget, and that's what Carl was referring to in that. So, appreciate you pointing that. Page two. We're on two now. Okay, thank you. Right, and, right, right, right. Any questions at all now? Katie, okay, anything you need to know? Yep. Unfortunately, no changes there. <laughs> this is general government capital projects, purchases uh, regarding buildings. So I've got a couple questions or comments. Um, Nothing specific, just wonder now, loud. Regarding the lighting upgrades under 5963 and 5965, regarding the LED upgrades for town hall and building number two LED lighting, um, are we, are, is any of that funded by grants, Brian, do you know, or would, we, would it be advantageous for us to try and seek grant reimbursement for these up, upgrades if, there's, if it's available? From MEA. Sorry, Heather. Sorry, uh, sorry, Ashley. <laughs> but I will say that um, I think through those um, 
the installers are getting discounts from, I think it's from Thomas Edison. Um, gotcha. So, so there are discounts happening, but grants are well, turn that. I will actively look for and review any that I see. If you find one, send it to me. Uh, I, would, I don't know where, but check with um, Maryland. Empower and Maryland Energy Administration um, look at those two websites. I know they have some, at least Energy Administration has some grants. I'm not saying dedicated, but that could be applied for by municipal gov governments. And just something with the building number two LED lighting. I'm not sure if maybe the installers can verify that the LEDs, if we use garage door openers or automatic openers in building number two, that the LED doesn't create interference with the openers if they're for winter time, if the trucks have it, so they can pull up, hit the button, the doors go up easily enough without them and they pull right in. I know I have that with my own garage door opener. I just Me too. I, yeah. So I, I think it'd be, I don't want to like have an upgrade to save money and then cause another, another problem. No, we'll be fine. Okay. Okay. I will say we have to increase that eighteen thousand because we reallocated some of the twelve thousand in the current fiscal year to redo the AC and the elevator room. So we need to add six thousand to that number. Okay. So then the total now is twenty if I'm adding correctly, twenty-four. Mm -hmm. Okay. See, now now I can put the blame on uh, Katie for my next question. I overpassed this, so Barney can blame Katie. Um, I noticed the 30000 for HVAC replacement in Town Hall. Um, didn't we replace something a couple years ago or something for Town Hall? Is this another unit that we're replacing then? So Town Hall has eight units. Okay. And we've replaced a few of them, but there's more. Okay. Just end of, end of life cycle. Okay, cool. Thank you. Right. Yeah, the push comes to show up on that 30,000. The old was right. The daily Oh, no. Oh, no, Brian. I wasn't well, saying yeah. that we needed well, to be dragged to it's, it's only a backup garage. We're oh. in that garage like we are our main building. Oh. So the lights are not on that often. Okay. So. Well, no, I got you. No, I was just concerned with. Like if it was an actively used garage, if the garage doors weren't open. I mean, the main building we upgraded in March, so we did all the work ourselves. Okay. So no. Very I'm, inexpensive. Yeah. I'm so, fine with it if they need to be replaced and either us do it or if someone else just saves the town money and environmentally responsible. So I'm fine with the up, with the upgrades of the LED lighting. So so um thank you there, Brian. You confused me. So fifty nine sixty five, Brian. We don't need that thirty thousand. I'm just saying, if push comes to shove, I know it's doing. I would say if we do it ourselves, we just bought our LED eight foot lamps from Home Depot, and they're relatively inexpensive. Wiring's already there. I know it's not going to be anywhere near thirty grand, but I would rather roll that money into doing have that, like y'all are going up here. Our wall units are. Shop. They're nice. They're nice to look at, but they they don't function. So do you want to modify that number as opposed to eliminating that number? Do you want to? Well, I mean, I know I would like to go to a heat pump and regular like in the house heat pump and air conditioning unit. They're running about seventy five hundred eight thousand in this house. I'm talking about the lighting though. The lighting I'm fine with what we have, honestly. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, so you want to zero that? Yeah, that's zero. Right, but then we can transition those funds to right, so say, we the can. HVAC, the yeah. HVAC heat pump, actual, not a window unit, not some. Yeah, I mean, it, it, they're they're efficient for what you have to do. If you don't want to run ductwork and all that stuff, they're great. Or old blue wall paint. We're only getting two, four years of service out of them. Right. Other wall units. Right. So 59.65 goes to zero, is what I'm hearing. Or do we want to leave money in it so cool. they can do an HVAC system? And so so you just want to, to change it? Yeah, he wants to replace, instead of replacing or doing LED lights, he'd yeah. like to do an HVAC system. If you can put 10 grand in for 10. Yep. Okay, so Sorry. 10 and for a heat pump, not for a HVAC. HVAC slash heat pump. Heat pump or whatever, yeah. Okay, so not lighting, HVAC. What would 
in your estimated cost, what would it cost for you guys to upgrade those LED lights? I can't remember what we paid for Home Depot. They were the just regular wired into light. We just wired in the series. I mean, because I'm wondering if we, I mean, we take that thirty thousand. It's going to be cheaper anyway. We can do a heat pump. Yeah. That he wants, and then the still get cheaper. still get the the yeah. ourselves to do the LED upgrades as well. And we're probably still going to pull yeah. a decent amount of money away from that thirty thousand yeah. just by doing the lights. I would just say. Say the overall amount, leave it at 30. Not for the light, but subdivide it into two projects 10,000 10, for the heat pump, and then the remainder for any light replacements. And then we might have a little, say, if the HVAC comes in more money than 10,000, we can pull from the lighting portion of it. Does that make you following my logic there? Katie's got it, UPW upgrades. So Lighting. Just use it for whatever. Yeah, just leave it in and do what she just did. HW upgrades. Covers it all. Is that good, Brian? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I mean, what I was looking at for $200 for a two ball of eight foot. Okay. We probably need three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty to thirty. Twenty-one sets. So you have five grand in light bulb. And how much did you say for the key pump estimate? Ten. All right. So, why don't we reduce it to twenty? You still have a little bit of leeway here and there, and we just recoup the ten thousand dollars that we have for the streets and roof. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. Yeah. I mean, that still gives you a little bit if it goes up, and obviously, if if HVAC. your your numbers are a little off, then you know we can we can supplement for the HVAC or the LED lighting. But I would rather it be as accurate as possible yeah. based on what his needs are, not just leave ten or ten grand in. Okay. No, I'm, you know, Council President, I'd just like to have that little extra cushion just in case it costs over overruns instead of having to yep. come back for everything. Yep. So, no, no Brian, just keep us posted on, on that and yeah, get that stuff in the figures. All right, cool. All right, so we're still on page three. Any other questions, concerns? Uh, yes, I have some uh, questions about the Flatiron Building budget. Yeah, so just just a statement. I understand the town has made the commitment to rehabilitate the Flatiron Building. Full stop. I understand that. Um, but the town got a, a grant or funding from the state of Maryland for 150000 And then you've got, just to refresh my memory, it was 20000 from the Historical Society? Or? Yeah, it was over twenty. Okay, so so 2000 Five thousand from American Legion. Right. Um, cutting to it, the two hundred and fifty thousand is based on the hundred fifty thousand dollar grant, and then I put a hundred thousand on top of that, which is what we had in last year, and that's basically seed money, money that is there to help Ashley apply for grants and get grants. So. That's that. It's the 150k DHCD grant plus 100,000. Okay, so some thoughts on this. It, so you've got the 150 thousand dollar grant money. Can that can that be used? Are there any limitations on what that can be used for? Can that be used on engineering design, paper studies? Does it have to be used on physical improvements to the building? What are you allowed to do with that money and in what time frame? The DHCD is for actual physically touching, doing, working on the building itself. So it cannot be used for engineering studies? Not engineering that design? particular one, no. Okay. Um, two, I'll just put the moose on the table as the expression goes. Um, just because we put $100,000 in last year, we didn't use all that hundred thousand dollars. It doesn't mean we need to apply the same amount this year. The second point is, um, you've got two hundred fifty thousand down, and your and your description is engineering detailed design. There's there's no way you're gonna 
need $250,000 for engineer detailed design? Because as we talked about at the last council meeting, really the first step seems to be taking that pre-concept design for option two and getting with all the right stakeholders, MDOT being the key one, and getting a read on if that option will even work, because that option involves relocating the road. Okay, so until you know that, you don't need to do, be doing a lot more detailed design. So this, I, I, I just don't understand this. In my view, um, you've got $150,000 from the state, you've got this other money, that's enough money for you over the next year to advance the flat iron building. You don't need any additional monies, certainly not an additional $100,000. Well, um, Ashley, the DHCD grant, can that money be used as part of a match of another grant? As long as it's not state funds. Okay. So that grant has to be matched either by the town yeah. or by private investment. Okay. And there's another grant that we haven't been awarded, but could be a possibility, a high possibility, but we'd have to match that, which would be $100,000. Yeah. So the 100000 in there makes us eligible for a grant that we have to yeah. And if we don't receive it, we don't use it. But if you do receive it, then it doubles your, your funds. It's, you have to have the town match. And we okay. have to show that in the budget to show that we are contributing towards that project. So just, but that again, we don't have it hand yet, but in order to apply, this is one of the steps we have to have. My, my concern is, just as just as I heard from the mayor, well, we put 100,000 in last year, so we're gonna do that this year. I look at this $250,000 line item here, and if I make an assessment and say, it's gonna take that project 10 years to complete, and you keep coming back and putting in $250,000 every year, that's essentially a 62.5% town contribution to that building. You're basically building in a 50% spending on that building, and I think that's too much for the town to be contributing to that project, given our budgetary constraints, and my belief that safety, security, and infrastructure should be prioritized as needs, and this project is more of the wants. So I, I'm not happy with putting an extra $100,000 in there. Okay. And if you need to show matching, why can't you just, we have money in reserves that can be used as matching funds. I am not over this line item. Okay, but I'm just saying, I don't know that you need to, I know you need to be able to show you could match, but you've, you've got money in reserves. You can say, we have that money to match to get, should we get a grant? Yeah, I absolutely respect your opinion on it, but I would, I mean, there, there's five of you sitting at the table, and if four of you are okay with it, then I mean, I would, respect your opinion, but, but move on. Uh, so if, I don't know how the rest of the council feels about it, but I, I'm very comfortable with that number. I think it needs to be in there. I think it does, it, it's our building. We have a responsibility to, to, to move on it. And I don't think what I have put on top of the grant that we have is, is uh, unreasonable. Well, and my concern is exactly what Ashley said. If we take that money out, we don't show that we have that money to match for the grants that we're applying for. So I think it's better to have it in there, as the mayor said in the past, a placeholder so that we have a better chance of getting some of these grants because we're starting to roll on grants. And I hate to, as much as, by the way, thank you, hard work you've been putting in nonstop. I don't think people have any idea what you guys do in town hall. Thank you for doing that because I'd hate to put a brick wall stop to all the work you're doing by mm -hmm. taking that out. So I agree it needs to be in there for that placeholder. I'll be with Councilwoman Galetti that it is a placeholder and a hundred thousand could not 
I'm not going to say, it may not just be for one grant. That could be a total of five different grants of smaller grants that it might require a match too. So it's just, it's just not one grant. I respect Councilman DeMoto's opinions and thoughts on this matter, but it's also maybe if we take it out, it might harm us from getting five separate grants too. So it's right, right now it's just a plate placeholder and I'm good with leaving it in there. As Ashley indicated, if we don't get a grant, it doesn't get allocated for a particular grant. Gotcha. And do we know how many, I mean, I know we've applied for grants when we've gotten shot down for other, other grants too, so. The grants are never guaranteed. The, yeah, but it's nice to, but if, we, if we're required to have a match, it's nice to have something, at least a placeholder in the budget for that. Because there are some grants that don't require Correct. A, a match too. Mm -hmm. So I'm fine with leaving it in there as a pl placeholder for right now. Councilman Rose? I'm, I'm actually good with it as a placeholder as well. But, um, you know, what I promised uh, citizens when I was running is we're not going to devote a lot of taxpayers' money to this. So, you know, if this continues to grow, I'm not going to be okay with it in the future. Um, but the hundred thousand dollar placeholder, which the mayor said would not would come back to us if we don't use it, or maybe that's just um, I'm okay with this particular one, but you know I want to kind of monitor it from year over year to make sure that it's not like Councilmember DeMoto said, we're not paying for sixty two percent of the building with taxpayer money. Barney, quick question: Is there any chance we use two hundred and fifty thousand dollars into that building this year in the next fiscal year? Barring it falling down and having to which it's not going to do. You might need a conversation with uh, the mayor first. <laughs> um, I mean, things are just, in my opinion, again, yeah, it's my yeah, first year. It's a million dollar project. Slow moving, you know. From what we were seeing. Um, and if you do do a detailed design, get everything ready, and then create, um, uh, you know, a timeline, state, you know, break it down the stages. But have all your design up front so you have everything that you need that um, that during that process when we get state highway approval and other approvals um, absolutely we can spend that uh, because it's gonna that's only like six percent and uh, we're right. between six and ten percent in the design cost so i guess my concern would be are we are we saying right now that the extra hundred thousand on top is not for that that extra hundred thousand on top is to only match grants if the grants are approved. I guess because what I'm wondering is if we end up going down that road and we do spend the two hundred fifty, and then we do get a grant, and now we have to put another hundred thousand in to match it. Is that what we're thinking, or are we going to earmark that hundred thousand of the two hundred fifty for grant purposes, only matching you know town funds with the grant funds, meaning we basically have a hundred fifty thousand. Of grant money now to utilize this fiscal year with a hundred thousand to be utilized depending on how the future grants come in. I mean, is that fair to say? I, I'm just trying to wonder how that money is going to be utilized. Well, I hear what you're saying, and there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of things things that have to move into place uh, over the next fiscal year. Yeah. Um, the hundred thousand is meant there meant to be there as as seed money. For any additional grant, uh, if we end up with a hundred thousand dollar matching grant, then this money would be the match for that. Okay. So yeah, in that case, it great. Was it was we'd be getting fifty cents on the dollar. Yeah. I think that's personally. I think that's reasonable. Okay. So, so with that hundred thousand being earmarked for potential grants only. Um, and we're saying we have $150,000 in working capital to move forward on the process, which has been fully funded by grants. That makes it a little easier to, basically we're, we're putting 100,000 in just for the potential of doubling it. If we don't double that money, then that 100,000 is not being spent. I have a point of clarification. Uh, my end of the decision is what Ashley's saying, is that grant is not for any year. That means you don't have any grant money to offset the hundred fifty thousand. So you can spend the hundred fifty thousand taxpayer money, and 
us a new grant being along specifically for that purpose. So you can keep saying there's 100,000 extra. Actually, we don't have 100,000 extra in the hand. Yeah, because I was going to get back to that. It, then, then we, to me, you cannot say two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and next to that engineering detailed design, because we were told we couldn't use that grant money for paper studies and design. So that's incorrect. Well, well Ashley, are you are you sure about that? Because I thought the DHCD grant. I, at this very moment, no. I have gone over the subject matter so much that I cannot recall exactly. But I can pull it and get it to council. Yeah, we're going to have to pull the DHCD grant. It's make sure that Because I thought it could be uh, used for uh, like With, reimbursing the architectural assessment. There was a street, the uh, strategic demolition yeah. for the DHCD. Yeah. So I can pull that and tell okay. you. Okay. So we're going to have to get it. Clarification. And at a minimum, I, I think we ought to say if you're going to add 100 k for that 100 k you ought to say if no grants are received in the fiscal year, that money goes back to the general capital fund or whatever, correct? I'd, I'd like to see that stipulated. I don't know. I'm not over this. I'm just excited. Well, I... Well, I'd, I'd be okay with the note that said 100,000 of this line is designated for matching grants. And, and, and if, if <laughs> absent any grants, it returns back to the general fund. Well, right? I mean, that happens naturally. So, you know, but I know when we don't spend it, it's but we're also going to continue to go after grants in every cycle to make the town be more pay for this. And this is going to be something we're going to have to address again and again. So I understand. It's yeah. not just. And which, we, which the previous council did vow to do. Mm -hmm. So, and again, as, as long as we're doing it, I, and I'm happy to do it as long as we're doing it responsibly. You know, mm -hmm. I'm uh, going to make a suggestion, but I don't think it would be the way we do it normally is like any leftover just gets rolled over into this line item for the next year. Totally can't go above a certain amount, but I don't think that we can do that, can we? I don't know if we can. Yeah, we can't compound. Yeah. Not compound, no, but just say if if the mayor or if for some this mayor or future mayor says, okay, I'm just gonna spend a hundred thousand, I'm just pulling out the number if we got fifty thousand left over from unspent funds from this current fiscal year. We just roll over that 50 and this add a 50 to it to make it an even 100. But I don't think we can do that well, now. Okay. We're not. No, no, I'm just saying if, if we wanted something of that nature as a, as a thought, but I don't believe we can. So. I'm done. I'm done. So, right. Are we going to wait for a follow up from Ashley just to confirm what that? I can bring that to the council table uh, at May. So, and we could have that answer that night. Um, I, I could ship it to you early if the public wants to. So, mm -hmm. still so, at the council meeting. So. Okay, so let me just get my brain wrapped. So, there was the strategic, so we're waiting for a confirmation or whatever from something. For the DHCD strategic demolition grant to see if it can be, if it's allowed to be used for engineering yeah. detail design. Okay. And if it can't, we're just we out not we out it changing the wording in the comment section then or what? Okay, we don't know. Okay, no, okay, no. I'm just trying to figure it out. What do you have to say? <laughs> in the current fiscal year, fiscal year 24, the council approved a certain amount for a matching grant or for detailed design. Or I, I, I need a refresher, I'm sorry. So the current 100,000 in this year just says engineering. I'm pretty sure, and I don't want to speak because I don't know, like I'm, I'm pretty sure, but I'm not 100%. The DHCD grant wouldn't cover 
the concept designs, I'm pretty sure it would cover the detailed designs once you chose the direction you wanted to go. Um, again, Ashley can look at the paperwork and. and that's that's what we need. To but I, so I think that's why we put detailed designs yeah. because I mean technically we got some designs. Yeah. yeah. So I think that's why we added that, like engineering. And because of the end, we received a grant from the Maryland Historical Trust of ten thousand dollars that would pay for the concept as preservation. Well as, Maryland. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yep. Um, yes. As well as the donations from the Historical Society and Rotary Club, the art is are, are all those funds going towards the design so far? Some of the donations we've gotten were for last year, and so those went towards the. Structural assessment. Structural assessment. Okay. So, um, so this the, in the current year, it's the ten thousand from Preservation Maryland and the ten thousand from um, the Historical Society right, right, right. that are going right. for or going towards the concept. So there was a general consensus when we adopted fiscal year twenty twenty four to allow up to a hundred thousand dollars to be spent on the the engineering design. Uh, am I correct or no? Nothing. No, 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 I, no. I don't know for sure, but I've got DHCD's website up here, Strategic Demolition, eligible projects. One of the eligible projects is construction level architectural and engineering designs. Okay, is that so if we're, talk, if we're talking about the detailed engineering design, the DHCD money should be eligible to be used for okay, we can clarify once, that. yeah, once we okay a final plan or a plan that BACD money from that strategic demolition can be used for to pay for the detailed plans. So is, is the thought for the fiscal year 2025 that we wouldn't want to spend over the total hundred that was in the approved budget at the, the first kind of get-go of fiscal year 2024 or just not add another? Um, well, okay. Again, my understanding is you, you <clears throat> budget for something, and if you don't spend the, that total amount, the remaining goes back in the kitty, and then you reassess. Right. So if we didn't, and it's kind of hard to do in May, but if we hadn't touched any of that hundred thousand, would there be a comfort level to make sure that no more than the originally agreed upon hundred thousand? Would be approved in the fiscal year 2025 budget. Is your concern that, like, just putting in like a hundred thousand and a hundred thousand and a hundred thousand, or just not wanting to go over the original hundred thousand from the fiscal year 2024? My, my concern is that you know, you're saying you need to park money here to show that. You can match some grants. So I understand. And I, you know, I don't know what the budget rule is, but I don't like that. I I'd rather just say we can match any grant we get. We we have it over in this other pocket of money called reserves. We don't have to call it out here. I, I just think this is a way to, you know, I understand you're you're trying to put as as much resources in here as possible, but then what happens is that becomes the benchmark. And every year you ask for that same amount. And if you were on track to do that, you're going to cost the town 62.5% to pay for that building. That's my concern. I have a question for Barney that's very relevant. So I remember back, remember back when we, and you gave us a memo, and it was, it was to approve the concept level design. I think it was like $45,000 for that. But then it was brought out through my questioning and others. It was it was a three phase design. There was there was concept, and then there was something else called what full design. There were two other components, and what was sold to me was that would be the total package of design costs. And I don't remember that memo for the second step costing two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Can you refresh my memory on what that was? Because I don't have that amount in front of me, but um, I know it was missing pieces to it. It was missing pieces to it. It's from from that total, the civil engineering was not included in that, um, and that's a 
that was in a good chunk of the uh, design. Okay, so if you allow me one more minute, Council President. Guys, I want to see a plan that shows what money has been spent so far, what's projected to be spent, what the phases are, and what they're going to cost, because we were presented a memo that laid out three phases of design, concept, full design, and something else. And I don't think all three of them cost $250,000 combined. So what I'm hearing here is uncertainty in this project. I want to know as much as possible about where we're headed with this project. That's all I'll say. Thank you. So where are we getting this right now? I mean, the previous council did approve, and there's three of them sitting here, did approve $100,000 in May. For engineering, and of that 100000 we had spent eighty one one forty six. So, and that was your concept design. Yep. So. And I think that memo that broke it down in the three, three phases said that the concept design we were going to spend forty thousand forty five thousand dollars paid to the contractor to do that. I'll go look for the memo myself, but if you could perhaps see if you can find it. And for the record, part of my concern, I was I was the council member last year that did not approve the budget. I voted against it because I thought there was too much money going to wants and not needs, and this was one of the categories. So. Well, I said I respect your opinion. I asked the council to keep the two hundred fifty thousand in there. So, I understand. Okay. I mean, listening obviously to all their concerns, I know Council Secretary Gillette and other Evans are arguing for this year. With the thought that we could double our money and basically pay fifty cents on the dollar, I'm I'm, I'm comfortable with it. Um, I would say that it's it's not going to be a benchmark. I, I agree with Councilmember Evans, um, and I would highly suggest utilizing the hundred and fifty thousand in grant money, leaving the hundred thousand in that fund, just in case we do get these grants approved, which hopefully we do, and then we can match them, and then we come back with even more money. Um, so I would, with that stipulation, I would be, uh, I'm okay, I'm okay, because we're not, we're not spending it, we're there, we're leaving it there to dump it. Um, okay. Any other questions or concerns on page three? I, I just wanna clarify one thing. If we do get a matching grant, we do have to spend that money. Oh yes, no, that's what I meant. It's, it's there. Yes, no, it's, it's there for us to. And I know, and I, and that's that's one thing. I would want us to utilize that to, okay. to be able to double our money and, and pay fifty cents on the dollar. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, we're holding one hundred because we're playing with two hundred. Right. And if we don't, then it's still going to be there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Any other questions on page three? Oh. We already forward? did public safety, so we can go to five. All right. Nobody has questions. We'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it won't be Scott here. <laughs> we're already answering. I don't think we have any more. I mean, all right. Streets and roads. Um, first thing for the annual road construction and paving project, um, this is already updated for the adjustment with prospect. Uh, yes. So originally, the number Barney had put in was four hundred fifty thousand, and then there was some discussions about the paving and everything, and so they increased it to six hundred to make up the difference for what were additional things we're doing this year, and so we'll still do, still do the things that we were planning to do next year. Okay, so nobody's being pushed aside or pushed back. Okay, so we're still. And our paving budget always kind of go like kind of leads into one year. Like we don't, I mean, we can't pave when it's pulled out, so we don't really start paving until May, June anyways, and then we just roll right into the next year. Council President, I have sure. some questions here, just or observations maybe or questions. 
under the following streets and roads line items, so 59, 41, 42, and I know looks like 43 says as needed. So the previous two ones, they are like on an as needed basis too, right? The repair for the handicap ramps and things of that nature and the 40,000, the storm drain improvements, are those, they're not mandated, they're just more of a, have them as placeholders in, in there also, correct? Yes. Okay. So we, we know we have storm drain improvements to do. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, and there's, there's some sidewalks Place. So there are placeholders. We will not spend maybe all that. And also on the Center Street improvements, which has been carried every year after year after year, that's also a bond that we received from the state too, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, follow up question. Uh, well, and then uh, uh, according to Dick, 5944, I think that's what he was requesting, wondering about the stormwater. Um, the, the annual upgrade. No, that's no mind. Uh, it's the following no. line item 59. It's on the next page. Okay, gotcha. Never mind. And that's also kind of like a placeholder, or do we have specific ponds in mind for the replacement? For the stormwater? Yeah. Um, that's, we get letters from the county of things that have to be done. It can. Uh, it's fixing some of those repairs. All right. That's it, Council President. Thank you. Yeah, a follow up on the uh, Center Street improvements. Remind me again that 500K, what's the sunset date on that? That if we don't use it, it, it goes away? 2027. 2027. Is that the state fiscal or calendar year? Do you know? I have it somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> okay. At this very moment, it's in a file. <laughs> I have to write it. But I do know it's 2027. Yeah, no, I, it's just. I just want to get on board with the same I feel like, dating. I feel like <laughs> that is a fiscal. Like a fiscal. So that state, I think we're 25, so 26. Yeah, that's, if it's fiscal, so it's next next spring is when they start planning for 2027 fiscal. Yeah, because I mean, you're, yeah. Yeah, the state's kind of different and weird. I just want to make sure we are on the same page for the for the timing of it. And then, and then our last question, and it's inappropriate to say it's inappropriate, but so if if the Beck property development were to be approved, they they would be connecting Center Street. So this five hundred thousand dollars is no longer available to us. Is it? What does this mean? I don't know the answer to that. Well, I think it's something that we would work with. The yeah. Just be able to utilize uh, to everybody's benefit. That's that's what I think too. I, mm -hmm. I don't think we have to discuss that in a closed meeting. I, I would say that we we've, we've already approached the any developer who looks at doing land up there and said we have you know a half million mm -hmm. to put toward this that maybe provides us something. Okay, mm -hmm. not to get too deep. I yes. think what it was that it was ear, earmarked whatever for this land acquisition and design, I believe. Yeah. So there are some conditions, so, but not to get into mm -hmm. discussions that can't be made public, but yeah, there are certain conditions on that, that for that. Okay, thank you. For the sidewall curb, gutter project, et cetera, how do we go about, is there a rotation as far as what neighborhoods get looked at at a certain fiscal years? So again, this is for towns, uh, sidewalks, like you know, maybe Trevor Storm Ponds or things like that. All the all the homeowners, all property owners are responsible for their own sidewalks. Okay. So we are we're not necessarily going for a neighborhood. And, and, uh, Good to know. I got seven emails from people in Nottingham saying that their sidewalks are falling in. So that's what I will ask. Okay. So they're responsible for. Correct. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Just, just on that note, we had discussed this in the past uh, with town staff, but I think it was done many years ago, but if the town chose to, the town could create some sort of a program where we say, hey, property owners, you know, this is your responsibility, but we have a grant program where the town will contribute X amount and you only have to contribute Maybe it's a 50-50 share or some percentage share. Like, 
if we really wanted to address some really bad sidewalk issues, that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to fully enforce the code. It may be uncomfortable, but fully enforce the code to those homeowners that are not maintaining their sidewalks and it's a safety issue. They, they, need, to, they need to do code enforcement on that. That's the comment. All right, we'll move on to page six. This is where, at the very top, the mandated stormwater management came from. I'm just curious because it's not a capital project. It gets tied to the capital but project. Do you depreciate it? So the lap, um, I mean, it's not depreciable. Yeah, but the thing is, because it helps with those mandate, like the state mandated ones, because they help us with those, so they get attached to the next big project. So the last couple got attached to like the twin bridge. Right. That's, 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 that's what the so books are ordered in there. I'm just asking accountants about that because it's kind of a funny decision whether you build capital or not. You just they like say it's not a depreciable asset. I've got one question, just more of a general question for Brian, more so than anything else, just so I don't ask questions throughout the rest of this. Because I noticed that trucks and vehicles, bucket trucks, pickup trucks, we have zero allotted for that. Are we, are the conditions of the trucks good enough where we can, and it doesn't mess up with our replacement cycle of vehicles or trucks? Yeah, I made the decision because it's been three years since we've had a plow. Okay. I've extended all the truck lives out. Okay. Plowing's what destroys our trucks. Okay, so the trucks are good because of the lack of plowing. Okay, so I just also wanted to make sure that we're not shooting ourselves in the foot because I know the turn well the turnaround times for pickup trucks or have been extremely long lately. I just want to make sure that if we needed one next fiscal year, we're not we weren't. It would it be beneficial to order now to get it for next no, year? But we're good. Not. Believe it or not, Ford's gotten much easier because okay. we're, nobody's buying a single cab in Massachusetts. Okay. Yeah, we're one of the only townships anymore that still buy a single cab. So we're class up to some. Yeah, everybody's mm -hmm. buying extended cab. So okay. it's pretty relatively easier now. Their Ford's actually caught back up to okay. find a single cab like okay. that few fit. And this goes for the mowers too, and all the parts equipment. We do it on all the lawnmowers, in all good shape for that. Yeah, four Z mowers, two and three John Deere's. We got plenty of mowers. Okay, but I mean, they they should survive another budget cycle. Um, okay. All right. Cool. Thank you. So just to clarify, he didn't. He doesn't have a truck on the general budget. Is that not, oh, no. not for next year, but the past couple of years they've been on the water sewer side, so he has been getting a new truck. Okay, so yeah, okay. No, I just want to make sure that Brian, as I indicated, was the more of the timing that if we needed something for, say, next fall or next winter, we're not. If it was extended delivery time, that we were making accommodations to get it before we truly needed it. But good to go. it sounds like we're good. Thank you, Brian. I have one question about uh, line item five nine four nine for the roundabout. Uh, looks like last year we were going to put in 1.338, this year it's 1.6. I know it was supposed to be completed last year. Was the full completion basically supposed to cost 1.338 and because it wasn't completed now it's going to 1.6? I can answer that. So when we were putting the budget together last year, we were hoping we would be further along in the process. And so we didn't spend as much in fiscal year 23 that we thought we would. Um, and it, it's still that same issue. Um, the budget, you know, the budget amendments at the end of the year that take all this money, a lot of this money is going to come out because we haven't really moved forward with this project. Okay. So, I mean, I, I know that initially, and I confirm with Council, Council Secretary Galetti, the roundabout was going to be funded fully by ARPA right. when, when it was proposed. Now we are. Well, wait, wait, wait. I think we have one and a half million towards it. Yes, it was supposed to be one and a half million, which would cover the actual construction of it. Okay. But it, wouldn't, it wasn't going to cover the little bit of engineering. I don't understand the engineering design part of it, but it wouldn't cover that. It would cover the That's actual construction. That's where the other four comes from. And I think the 1338 was prior to bids, receiving bids. Okay. But I think it came in higher. Okay. Offhand, I don't know the exact number. Okay. My only concern was 
clearly in the last council meeting we went over AMT's lack of being able to fulfill what they were doing and I wanted to make sure that inflation hasn't cost the town more money because they could not fulfill in a timely manner. Right. So that what we're saying is that did not happen. Yeah. Okay. It's just the, the, the way when we're doing our budget and when we pull stuff out, it's sometimes there's a line. Yeah, no, that's fine. Can I ask you a question? Something I just caught you said, because I thought we did have 1.5 million, but now we're saying 1.25 million with our fund. Because we spent we spent 125 last year. We spent around 130 this year. Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Thanks. Thank you very much. Any other questions or six? Let's go six. All right. Parks and recreation. Minutes review. If anyone has any questions, question when you're ready. Good. Uh, the last item, Prospect Park, down at the bottom, fifty-nine seventy-three. It says we're going to spend a hundred thousand dollars to do a quote-unquote upgrade design. I'd like to know more about what that means. And then you're saying next next year we're gonna we're gonna ask for 900k to redo Prospect Park. And is this is Prospect Park in dire need of these improvements? And was this recommended by the Parks and Recs Commission? Tell me the story on this item. So Prospect Park, we met with. Um uh, Mike, Mike Regal, mm -hmm. Brian, um, like a year ago, I don't remember when exactly, but we talked about things that we could do, um, and today we just haven't gotten started, but we're, we're getting ready to get started on like, um, other things that come up mm -hmm. probably, so um, it's something I don't think we're going to spend this year's money um, fully, um, and I mean, it's just on the number out there what, what we can do next year. Okay. Um, I think I can answer part of that question because based on Parks and Rec's discussion and adding to what Barney just said, this park does need help. It does need upgrading. Did we replace the roof on the pavilion? Several years back, yes. Several right. years back, yes. Um, yeah. It does need upgrading. It does need improvements. And I know they've been talking about this for a couple of years. At Parks and Rec, so it's just kind of something that's been pushed down. Yeah, right. To answer your question, they have been talking about it for a couple years. And, and the addition of a restroom facility, and other right? Like lot things. things that they were looking at. And really upgrading because that back basketball court that's a pickleball court, most people don't even know it's there. So it was also right, Ashley, to get accessibility back to those back courts, also because it's a whole other amenity that could be used if we. Had better visibility and access to it. If I remember correctly, that's about one of the older parks in town. It's never really been upgraded or touched in the past 10, 15 years and it's showing its age. And there were some concerns. I mean, it's been well well maintained, but the pavilion could be upgraded. There are some upgraded features and that could be done with it to make a much more usable and suitable park for the town and the needs of the park. I mean, I just looked at the age of the park. The play pudding is coming to its age. Yeah. And if you're going to replace it, I, I seriously want to move out of that bottom. Yeah. So, get, so if you're going to do all that work, redesign your park to make it much more user friendly. Yeah. And the, I want to say the, I want to say the dam burn wall still there. I know there was some well, concerns a couple of years ago about. The state of disability of that and the drain pipe and stuff. Well, it's an unusual system how we drain that pond, and it's that corrugated pipe is 30 plus years old. Yeah, so that needs to be done. I know the state's looking more and more at the, um, I want to say the safety of the dams and the lakes that are like that. So, yeah, I mean, the head wall is perfect. It's thank just, you, the head wall. Yeah, the head wall is fine. It's just how we drain that pond is coming to a shelf life. The mm -hmm. pond needs dredge. I mean, we can gain a lot more depth out of that pond. The deeper it is, the less algae, the cleaner the water. So, I mean, dredging the pond by itself was $150,000. Yeah. So, 
it's more than the hundred thousand for the design is okay with me. So that's probably what it's going to cost. And then otherwise for park improvements and stuff, we can see funding through program of open space money on the Frederick County side and the state and things of that nature. So I'm okay with it. Even the hundred thousand, we could see POS money if need be for the design. Any other questions? I do have one quick thing regarding line item 5981, Richmond Ridge Baseball Field. Um, you know, I asked about upkeep for the fields um, as far as a not an overall daily maintenance concern, but just a overall upkeep concern as far as fill dirt, um, you know, just usable. Um, in talks with the baseball commissioner uh, that was allocated that field this year, um, face masks are sitting pretty low. It's in pretty dire need of dirt. Um, and when the base pass is sit low, you have to cancel a lot of games that you would normally have to cancel. And it, it makes it very difficult to get the games in. While I understand the, the overall day-to-day -day outside of grass cutting, grooming of the field should absolutely be done by the volunteers at Maya or at Fort County or whoever they're allocated to by the Parks and Rec Department. To ask a 501c3 nonprofit that possibly was only allocated that field for that one season to dump an amount of dirt in it that's going to uphold that field for the next three to four to five years, I don't think is fair. Um, you know, I, obviously I'm a little personal to this too because I run, you know, I run a program. So, but these specific 501 are not guaranteed these fields year after year. Therefore, I do not believe that they should have to pay on top of their parents paying town taxes, which most of them do, then you have to pay again which is going to pull money away from new equipment, see, you know, upgraded equipment, uniforms, et cetera, to dump in dirt to use for possibly only one year, and then another program that might get it allocated next year is going to not have to do anything. Can I jump in, Brian? I want to ask you a question because I want to go back years, like when Queen Ridge first came and, and basically Frederick County gave it to us as the town because it's a Frederick County school. We were putting dirt in there, right? Because the school programs use the fields. It's not just the sports using the field. So have we put dirt in there on the baseball fields, haven't we? I mean, we would have had to in the first 10 years or so, right? No, I mean, when Mayo ran it, they had a travel program there for quite a while, and their travel program paid to do it, put the dirt on the field. They had a surplus pile at the back left corner. That's now gone. Um, we have been putting dirt just for water to keep water off the fields. We dumped four tons on Twin Ridge last year. We re rebuilt all the pitcher's mounds. Uh, we took three dump truck loads down east-west around home plate, picked that back up and rebuilt the pitcher's mound. And it was, it was just to the point of the, the people using the field was not reading up after themselves. So the next coach shows up, the pitcher's mound is two inches low. When he's done, it's four inches low. Yeah. And I'm getting a call two weeks later where we got a big hole. Well, you know, you have to do maintenance on the fields after each baseball game. You have to leave it better right. than you find it. And so this year, May came in, they put all their own dirt over on that field. They opened it all up. I asked her if she wanted us to do anything there, and it was, we were good. I've talked to a Ford County guy. I believe the only field they have full time is East West. And honestly, I don't know who has Twin Ridge now. I don't know who's using that. Basically, kids that live in this town, you know, whether it's one organization or the other. Um, okay. I, I mean, I thought so because we'd gotten that POS money years ago to put those dugouts in, right? That's correct. Do we, can we get POS money for things like dirt, or is it really just for capital things like the dugouts? And I, I, I don't know. I'd have to go through that because I mean, if I need a load of dirt, I just call Pennsylvania and they just bring it down. So yeah, they, they get the load of dirt, basically, you guys are making sure. I thought, because those are our two lowest-lying fields, typically, aren't they, that the town maintains, east-west and Quinn Ridge? 
they have the worst run on. Yeah, they have the water runs down across the streets. Twin Ridge, correct me if I'm wrong. Are we talking about the town on filler there or the county? Because I know they, when we got the filler, they got kind of. Twin Ridge Elementary School. Who owns what? Town there. owns all the ball fields in the front of the school and in the back of the school. And that was given to us by Frederick County as part of the agreement of building Twin Ridge Elementary School. Yeah. So those schools. We took care of some of the fields that are there. Brian, they, they just resurveyed that two years ago. The town of Mount Airy proper, we own deeded. The baseball field in the middle and the lower field that they have recreation on every day for school. The so school uses fields, one field. That's Hold on, Carl. Those, Go ahead, Brian. Those two fields, the town owns property. We mow them, we maintain them. Frederick County for that school has authorized us after three o'clock to be in charge of scheduling all of the field maintenance, mm -hmm. field uses. But we don't mow it, we don't do anything. The upper two, there's two super old fields that on the top. Four County brought in, they dug out six inches and put baseball dirt in all of them. For the past two years, we've been going up, weed killing it and rototilling it to open it back up for them just for the little guys. And then they work it out with soccer. So soccer's there on Sunday, baseball Saturday or soccer Saturday. Yeah, that baseball. one we always call the soccer field. It had the diamonds that weren't being used. So the upper soccer. And what about the front soccer? That is under our direction for administering who use. That's it. We don't know it. We don't maintain it. We have nothing to do with it except they can go through actually to get the rights to that field. To reserve it through parks and rec. <laughs> That's just one if we end up maintaining something over there where I just want to make sure we're maintaining what we own and not. I mean, Brian's got a handle on it, he always yeah. has. You've been maintaining those yeah. fields for how many years since they like, built, right? Yeah, I just don't want. Thank you, Brian. Yeah, I just don't want to be spending money on the county, but I don't want to be maintaining yeah. something that the yeah. county is required to maintain. That's it. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt you there, Council Mobility. Oh, right. Yeah. Right. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, and if, as far as the baseball, um, I mean, that's up to the town fathers. If the town fathers dictate for me to take a more active role in maintaining the fields, that's my job. I'll do whatever they tell me to do. So, yeah, I don't know if it's, it's a more active role. It's just a matter of, you know, if, if, they, if it needs dirt or whatever, you know, the conversation was had before was it's it's on them to do it. They we just know it. They handle everything else. The problem with that is, you might come into it one year where you just handled everything, and then you go to a parks and rec meeting and it gets taken away from you. That that's an issue. I mean, I you know it just is what it is. I'm not going to invest ten thousand dollars of five hundred one c three money into a field that you're only granting me use for for three months, and then next year it might go to somebody else because somebody in the parks department or the parks and rec commission. Decided that's where it should go. That's not that's not a way to do things. So, if that's a process in which we do, the town needs to take ownership to at least Put the have fence more fence. than what is going to take care of the fences, right? You can't ask five hundred one c threes to then take care of them if you're not going to be guaranteed use for them for the life of the time that you're taking care of them. Best case, or at least offer a call for up there for them to you know, maintain the picture. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I promise. There's plenty of volunteers in this town, and they're great volunteers. And if there's dirt left there from a dump truck, it's going to get spread, one hundred percent. So I'm thinking if it if it's if Twin Ridge, I don't know the condition of it right now, and we're in the middle of baseball season, right? If they needed dirt, they could come to Parks and Rec and say, "Hey, you know, we need a pile of dirt." I don't, what does a pile of dirt cost? You know, off the top of your head. Yeah, I mean, it's expensive because it's, it's 5000 10, I was getting, I think my last load was 20 ton and I paid 7500 So $7,500. So maybe if it's in bad condition, I mean, that's a good amount to ask, like, say, for example, and I don't know who has what because I'm not in the arena of who has which fields. I just let Parks and Rec take care yeah, of it. Let's say Mayo has that right now. To ask them to put $7,500 of dirt down, I agree, because next year, Parks and Rec could go, well, four counties getting half of that and you're getting half. So I'm thinking if it's a situation where, as you know, because your kids played on that field, my kids too, did too, it's a safety issue. So if they're desperate need of dirt, they could come to Parks and Rec and maybe say, we could do a matching program. We'll pay half. Could the town pay half? 
and let Brian get the dirt order, it's probably a much more discount price than they're gonna get, right? So I'd say that's something we could address, don't you think, Mayor? I mean, we can certainly look at it. Uh, you know, I'm not sure where that right. money would come out of the budget if we're not set. I think we're um, yeah, we probably won't be sure, but again, maybe something next year we have to look at it. Sorry, that was my one time to extend. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you know I'm gonna jump we'll, on that field down the wagon. And, we'll, and we'll hold you hold you to that, Council President. <laughs> All right, number page number nine. Any questions or concerns? Too, uh, for this on page nine, and uh, to also say thank you for the staff. At least we have looked at or and begin to consider the, the Windy Ridge Bike Trail maintenance because there is a line, uh, there is a sub line item in the line item for Windy, Windy Ridge. So at least we are beginning to look at look at that too. So or at least we have have the ability to put, add some money to it. Are we on page 10 now? Yeah. Something like that. I've got one, I do have one question, just more of a clarification question for Katie. And it's under the transfer to reserves for future capital improvements. And it's under the police station reserve. I think I got the answer, but I just think it needs some clarification because we have 3.5 million being transferred to reserve for that. Where is that coming from? Or what's the source well, of that funding for that? So when you get a bond, you have to show the full amount of the bond as your revenue in the year that you get it. And that's so we're earlier. A, right, so we're okay. getting a bond for $4.5 million for the police station. Mm -hmm. But we only intend to spend a million dollars of that in the in fiscal year 25. Of, of the bonds? Or, of the bonds. Okay. So the other three and a half million has to go to a reserve just for the police station. Okay. I, just want to make sure because I was kind of confused with that where the 3.5 is coming from. So, thank you. Okay, so we have an additional um, 42357 so that will reduce the pool from transfer. From, ah, sorry. It will reduce the transfer from reserves. So, I just have to. Mr. Swanson, would you like to take my seat? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just found out basically the water was in my past years. The water and sewer budget is pretty much it is what it is, and unfortunately, we're kind of required to spend it. <laughs> so we're not changing that much. <laughs> Questions on page one. Just Sorry, one other question. I know some things are going up and down. I want to maybe Dick can answer or Barney. Line item 4494 under income. I noticed that the ENR operating and maintenance expenses were we budgeted less for this year. We went back to 2022. Is there a particular reason or Katie can? Okay. Um, so in fiscal year 23, we received 74,237. So that's what we budgeted in. For 24, but then we only received 5916. I have contacted the state about how they determine what we get, and they they really have no explanation. They're like, sometimes you get more, sometimes you don't. <laughs> so in 23, we got more, which was great, um, and then we went back down to our normal 5916. That doesn't surprise me with that answer. <laughs> okay, but I mean. Budget based on what we got the previous year. Okay, but I guess what I was saying is asking is say the 74, did that cover all the expenses for E, e, e and R cost related? Or the grant, do you know, or what I guess did we kick in any funding for the E and R O and M expenses under when we got seventy four thousand, do you know? So we put in that system 
if the state well, pro before I started. Yeah, but I'm just trying to figure out if we got to put money towards something if the okay. state's been paying for it in the past. The installation of the ENR was 100% funded. It was like a three million dollar project, and um, with that, they said that they would give us ONM for so many years, but. There's no guarantee of us getting that in the near future. So it's, it's just something that they, uh, they give so, us. So far to date, they've been giving us money and that's a good thing. And we adjust as needed right. the operating. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Page two. Chance to review. I don't know if you have any questions. Hey, Barney, real quick for the just looking at the twenty twenty five prep under fifty three zero four. We have 133,000. Is there a specific sewer system we're looking at repairing in 2025? So this, I think, oh, sorry. Sorry. this is the maintenance of all sewer related, like all the sewer stations, the okay. pumps, the, yeah. Okay. Um, and I try to put notes when they, like when things are just a lot. Um, and me, I'm, unfortunately, the cost has just gone up. Okay. So we're just, yeah, we're expecting just, it to, to go up. And, yeah, and it, I mean, it's based on, you know, 2023's actuals and then what we spent year to date and kind of what's projected this year. Right. And this is operating now, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, question. Yep. Um, and maybe this isn't the right page, but it's a general question, and then if we get to the page, you can answer it or. So PFAS, PFAS remediation, PFAS treatment. Is there anything in the Hold on, wait a minute. We lost it. Let's get somebody turned off the mic. Yeah, it shuts down all that stuff. Yeah, so. Oh, it does? The mic is yeah, still there? Yeah, for so many hours. <laughs> it was, it was, it was, it was it's almost an hour. Yeah, it was an hour. It's 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 <laughs> Steve, uh, PFAS is in the capital side. Okay. Uh, page three. Okay, thank you. The testing, the, the quarterly testing is on the operating side, though, right. under the water. Yeah, I think I saw that. Yeah. Hey, Chief, to clarify for me, so twenty thousand for quarterly. That's not each quarter we owe twenty thousand, correct? Um, it's just the total for four, for each quarter is about five. Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure because it didn't. It did not jog off with the total number of the thirty-two and the twenty. So okay, cool. Thank you. All right, do we have any more questions on page two? Um, I think page three question, just more of clarification. On the administrative 51110 audit fees, what are the audits for? Is it like the annual? So the audit fees on the water side is for um the single audit that we have to do for the ARPA funds. Oh, okay, for the ARPA, okay. Yeah. Okay, it's not something that we normally. Right, now whenever you spend more than 750,000 in federal funds, you have to get a single audit. Mm -hmm. And because the majority of the ARPA funds will like water and sewer infrastructure, that's why it's charged to water and sewer. Yeah, so once we finish using the ARPA funds, there should not be a need for it. Well, then we're moving into the PFAS fund, so we're probably still gonna have that. <laughs> All right, thank you. <laughs> any follow-ups on three? Any follow -ups on three?
We're on page four now. We should be on page four. Okay, Susan. My, uh, so well, my 24 for what? Added yeah. many expenses. Yeah. Here we go. Let's see. But it didn't affect 25. So you good, Dan? Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. I'm here. Sorry, the question's on phone. Okay. Okay. Probably since 21, we do have a transfer over to Castle from the operating. So that's, that's a good thing. Katie, I got a question on page five, just more general question. Under the summary, the other revenue, I might have saw this in the previous pages and just glanced over. What are the, some of the sources of the other re revenue under here? Do you know? Or maybe Dick knows? It's on page five on the summary. Um, that is interest income on investments, penalty okay. for late fees, um, miscellaneous. Miscellaneous um, fees and revenue, yeah. okay. Um, water tower re revenue. Okay. Yeah. Just, okay. It's just one of the things. It's just stuff related not directly to the, the billing like of the water tower. Okay. I just noticed that it went down, so I just was wondering if it was something, but you said. It's miscellaneous. Well, I mean, it, it would go down because that state grant is in there, so that's 20000 right there. Ah, okay, gotcha. Thank you. Any questions? All right. All right, so on the water sewer capital side, I do have a change um, in doing our ARPA. Audit? The information that we had to just put in. So every year you have to go in and tell them how much you spent so far. And you know, it's in the middle. Yeah. So your, your reports, your ARPA reporting. I was drawing the blank. It's like um, four o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it looks like what we anticipated spending on the water main replacements is coming in a little bit less than what we thought we were going to spend. Um, about 130000 less than what we anticipated spending. So we are going to add that 130000 to the lab upgrade um, because that's an already approved project. And so um, we just I just have to add the 130 in revenue for um, ARPA and then increase the laboratory expenses from 140 to 270 I think that's okay. Now, will that complete the upgrades for the lab, the 270, or do we still have more upgrades to do for the lab? No, that should complete it. Okay. Uh, a question. I, I may have missed the beat here, so I apologize, but is this is additional money. I remember last year we approved some funding for the to rehabilitate the, the lab. So this is on top of that? Yes. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. So we thought we had a little bit, um, so last year we were like, okay, we're gonna have a little bit left over. And now we, now that the water main project is gonna be completed this year, we know exactly how much. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. All right, any other questions? Page two. Um, this is where, no, I think it's page three, is where you'll see the defects. Okay. Oh, okay. We're still on page two, right? Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> I think I got one quick question again uh, regarding the inflow and infiltration line 1932. Is the 80,000 just a placeholder? I had this marked before. Is the 80,000 a placeholder or do we know where we're going to be spending that on the I and I? We don't know exactly, uh, but we do have uh, some manholes that we can we, we, we start for those. Um, okay. So that was part of it. Okay. Uh, but I mean, we, we did most of the sanitary sewer uh, lines that we wanted to do. 
Uh, but we need to do a follow-up um, check of everything and kind of see where we're at. Okay. And then we might find an extra one. Okay. So there will be projects identified that use the uh, yeah. 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 
think the plan is to go through uh, salaries. Yeah, closed session. So we're going to go into a closed session. So what I'll do is I will roll call into a closed session. At the conclusion of our closed session, the budget workshop will then be over. Uh, Council Member Evans. Aye. Council Member Munger. Aye. It's in Council Secretary Galetti. Aye. Council Member Devoter. Aye. I have an aye as well. Uh, we will now move into closed session.